morning everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, in this talk, I will give a uh, uh, low data complexity attack on the GMR2 cyber used in the satellite mobile phones. Uh, this is the outline of this talk. Uh, first, we will give the background of and the GMR2 cipher. And then we will replace the component of the cipher. And then we will give the low data complexity attack and uh, we will show the experimental results. And first, uh, let's see the background. Uh, mobile com communication system have revolutionized the way we inter interact with each other. And in some special environment, we should uh, use the satellite-based satellite mobile phones. For example, if you, you are in the you are in the desert. And what is the GMR? GMR stands for the Geo Mobile uh, Radio, and the Geo uh, stands for the Geo Stationary Earth Operator. Uh, there are two uh, major servers in the standard: uh, GMR two and GMR uh, GMR one and GMR two. Uh, both the uh, two ciphers are strip ciphers, and uh, they are reconstructed uh, recently. Uh, GMR1 is a uh, strip cipher based on A52 of GSM, and it can be totally broken by cipher text only attack. And GMR2 cipher uh, adopts some new design strategies, and uh, based on the read collision. Techniques it can be broken by knowing plan text attack. <coughs> uh, in this talk, we focus on GMR to stream ciphers. Uh, first, we will study the uh, property of each component and uh, present the, a new case and determined attack, and we call it dynamically uh, case and uh, determined attack. Uh, Compared with the known results, uh, our attack uh, needs only one frame of the data. Uh, that's to say, only 15 bytes. And the time complexity is 2 to 28, which is uh, larger than the previous ones. Uh, let's uh, go to the sec second section. Uh, each uh, in general, two data are divided into frames identified by the frame number with 22 bits. And uh, in each, each new, uh, new frame is re in uh, about uh, every 15 bytes. Uh, totally 128 bits. Uh, 120 bits. Uh, the the premise of GMR2, as uh, as the key is uh, 20, uh, 64 bits, and the RV length is uh, 22, and uh, the key stream bits uh, in the frame is 120 bits. Uh, <coughs> this is the over, overview of GMR2 cipher. And S0 to S7 is are registers, uh, each registers, each one is uh, uh, eight bits. And the input of the server, servers are uh, C, T, K, and, uh, and S0 to S7. Uh, F, F combines two bytes of session key with previous output. Uh, Z L is the stream uh, of the key stream. Uh, Z L is the key stream, and P at each clock uh, we output Z L and uh, feedback P to F, and also update the registers. C is a counter a range from zero to seven, uh, and T is uh, can be either zero or one. A G, a G component is a linear function. 
and uh, the, and each each contains two S boxes, which uh, is the, the S two and the S six in case. Uh, let's see F component. <coughs> uh, at the Earth clock, uh, eight byte, eight byte uh, on the session key K zero to K, uh, K zero to K seven, uh, is are input to the cipher. And uh, the counter C, counter number C, counter number C. Uh, Ratio from zero to seven, synchronous and repeated, and t, t is uh, decided by c. If c is uh, is odd, then t is one, and if c is even, then t is zero. Uh, the lower side, I put the case with the. Uh, first, uh, according to the value of C, okay, according to the value of C, uh, we choose uh, some case to XOR P as input to to alpha. And tor one, tor one maps four bit to to three bit, uh, which is select the upper output, and uh, tor two. Here, total. Total maps three bit to three bit, which determine the rotation. Uh, this is the expression of the output. Uh, if if t is zero, they output the least significant four bits of k c x or p, and if t is one, they output the the most significant uh, four bits of <coughs> KC, X or P. Uh, G component is, uh, is a linear transformation and we will give the expression uh, later. This is the H component. Uh, here S2 is the second S box of S and the S6 is the six, sixth uh, S box of S. Uh, initialize in the initialize uh, we set C and G to zero and uh, initialize S with frame number N and uh, eight byte keys are uh, written to written to F and uh, clock the cipher eight times and did that output. Uh, that's okay. So in the first uh, eight clocks we we don't output anything. Then, in the general, general, generation mode for each frame number n, uh, further clock the cipher 15 times and output the history. Uh, in this expression, the the n error denotes the error spike of the key stream generated after <coughs> initialization with them. Uh, let's see some property of F. Uh, if P is known, then we can get the value of alpha only by the most or least significant four bits of KC. Since in the attack, we can know uh, C is known to us and uh, P P is uh, some um, key stream, so it can be known to us. Uh, property of H. Uh, in some cases, we can invert S1 and S6. For example, give the row index an out output. The column index can be uniquely obtained. Uh, this property is the same as in S. Uh, property of G uh, is the key point in our attack. Uh, 
the links between the input and output of G can be expressed by a well-structured mixed uh, matrix. Uh, the matrix is as follows. Uh, note that uh, here uh, the matrix uh, can. Uh, we can write the battery in a block matrix, just as, as this one. Uh, values here are all zero. <coughs> and this value, this value, uh, select the room number of the Xbox, and this value selects the column number of the Xbox. These are zeros. And define the metric as this part uh, to be A and this part A, this part B. So we can write the linear system as uh, Y as these linear systems. And besides this one, we can write another linear system. Uh, let let kh denote the the most significant four bits of k and kl denote the least significant bits of of k and u u is, is defined as the four linear significant bits x or the four most significant bits. Then we can see x2 is equal to kh, x or ku, x or u, kl, x, x or u. And the, these equations can be added to the former linear system. There are, four, there are five equations in this system. And in the attack, uh, w. W1, W2, V, V1, V2, U uh, are all known to us. And uh, from the system, we can find that given a value of X, we can determine the value of Y. Uh, and if you give the value of Y, we can determine the value of X. And Y1, Y1 selects the column index of the S box, and the Y2 selects the row index. Uh, this equation is essential in, the, in our type. Uh, besides, it will find that uh, some output, uh, some bit of the output, only re related to some, to only a part of into the bits. For example, uh, the four bits, these four bits, only related to K, C, X, or P. So, in the attack, we can to determine the value of, of to determine value in here, we can only. <coughs> Yes, uh, the the value of K C X or P, it uh, it has no relation with these values. Uh, now we will give the low data from elastic attack. Uh, in the traditional case and the determinant attack, the the guest and the determiner part of the internal state are known in prior before applying the attack. For example, if we guess the value of K1, we can determine the value of K2 or K3. Uh, however, in our attack, which we call a dynamic guess and attack, guess and uh, determine, we will dynamically guess and determine. For example, if we uh, guess K1, in some cases, we will determine K2, and in some cases, we will determine K3. K3. Uh, in some others, we, maybe we could not determine anything. Uh, let's see how these three components interact with each other. Uh, since P and uh, 
S0 must be known to us. We should analyze the cipher at the C plus 8 clock. Uh, and the, in the keystream generation phase. Uh, this is the rule one. Uh, let uh, if if c if c is the odd number and given a value uh, for k h k h is the uh, the most uh, significant four bit of k. If c equals to one alpha, then using the theory of linear consistent test, uh, we can determine k l together with the value of v n and uh, c plus h. Uh, this is to say, if we guess 4 bits of k, we will determine another 4 bits of k. This is the rule 2. Uh, it is similar with rule 1. And uh, if we give some, if we guess K to one alpha and K H, and then we will determine K L. So if we guess only four four bits of K, and we will determine another four bits of K. Uh, rule three can be shown from this equation. Uh, Given guess the value of K C, if to one alpha is not equal to C. Then k to one alpha can be determined by the by history. From this row, we can see that if we guess eight bit of k, we will determine another eight bit of k. This is the last row in our attack. Uh, give the give guess value for k c and k to one alpha. Uh, we can determine whether these guess values are wrong. All right. Uh, this is because uh, if the if K C and K to one are unknown, uh, that's to say the input here are known. So according to the process of the cipher, we can check whether the output is this value or not. If this value are not equal. Uh, the guess value must be wrong. The attack procedure is as follows. First, we capture a frame of keystream. Uh, altogether, there are 15 bytes. And then we can apply the guess and the determinant attack on 8th to the 14th clock. Uh, the first uh, each byte of the of Z is used to uh, update the registers. First, we define an index set gamma and uh, initialize with gamma with an uh, empty set. Uh, numbers in gamma save the index for the session key that has been known. For example, if we have no K0, then 0 is uh, an element in gamma. They analyze the cipher at the C plus A clock sequential. Uh, the process is a little boring. So I think uh, if someone is interested in this, you can see the full version in our paper. So let's see the complexity analysis. Uh, data of our attack is only 15 bytes. And the first bytes are used for verification, and the last uh, seven bytes are used for guessing and determining. Uh, first, we use the last uh, seven bytes for guessing and determining. Then, uh, we will get some uh, possible value for k. And we use the first eight bytes uh, to verify if this guess the value are right or wrong. And the time complexity is uh, as follows, uh, just as we analyzed before. When guessing 8-bit, we will determine 8-bit. And uh, if we guess 
forfeit, we will determine forfeit our own. So, so, in this attack, we, we will get at most 20, uh, 32 bits of the session key. Uh, to, is, to estimation the complexity exactly, it is very difficult. So we, we show this by experimental result and uh, about uh, 2 to 28 exhaustive search. Uh, let's see the experimental results. This is uh, our result. We do the experiment 1,000 times. And we can see that the exhaustive uh, bit of is about 28 most uh, here, and uh, only a little to 29. Mm. Uh, the experiment is done in a non-optimized realization, and if you, I think. Uh, the result can be done better if we adopt some optimized. And the session keys can be recovered in about 700 seconds on average. Uh, totally 580 seconds for using the candidate. Uh, since in this, in this phase, we should uh, solve the equation, so the time is more than the, in the second phase and uh, about 128 seconds for exhaustive search. Uh, we perform a separate analysis of the GMR2 cipher, and uh, we propose the dynamic gas and determinant strategy. Uh, the design of GMR2 cipher is far from the state of art strip cipher. And uh, the last I think we should be careful when you do the satellite things. Thank you. Do you have questions for us? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I have one. Um, so, you reduced the daily complexity from five to six frames to one frame. Uh, do we have some practical scenario in mind where this is? Um, Good to have, but this is important. Um, so, with one frame, can you do a practical attack that you could not do with five or six frames? Data competition? In the practical time, maybe we, we could not get uh, so much data. Any other question? If not, let's thank Sundin again.